had them built out and then placed here around four years ago. So the bottom containers are ours and the upstairs actually belongs to an artist friend of mine. He's a glass worker, a lamp worker. And then there's another artist who works in the front studio here. She uses recycled materials to create all of her artwork. There's also a photographer who has a part of the studio in the back. And then Lily is a jewelry maker and she has the very back of their quadrant. They're intermodel containers. So they're double wide actually. So they're built out side by side with like the inner container walls removed so that there can be a larger space. The inside's been changed. Yeah, so the inside is definitely different. And we've adapted with ours based on like things like leaks um, and just what our needs were. But my friend Sean runs this side as his office. So this is just the front of my studio. I work as an artist. So I've been working on my website today. I'm getting a collection of jewelry up, which is actually used with the discards of glass that Evan uses from upstairs. If something breaks or falls apart, he'll give me the discards and remnants, and then I'll turn it into actual physical jewelry. So there's still the, the doors marina. on. Right? So yeah. That, do you use those? In the winter time, because there's no insulation in the floors whatsoever, so once it drops between 32 degrees, water will freeze to the ground. So we actually have have a ton of space heaters running in here. Like there's no running water, but it gets really cold. So closing up those is the best way in the winter time to live here. And then we would lock it here if it were winter and it would just rotate onto the lower handle there. That actually logs into place below and above. So it totally, it's totally sealed. <laughs> I have much more space. Okay, so books, books, books. This is some like thing I was making with some glass discards. So this is my kitchen. Um, it's, I mean, it's everything you need. Like I bake, I cook all the time. I love cooking. So you have a, mm -hmm. like a toaster oven? What's yeah, that? yeah, this is a Breville toaster oven for baking, cooking, lots of. And then you out. have a stove top? Yeah, two electric burners. Uh -huh. A kettle and then some plates and dishes. My teeny tiny little fridge, some homemade kombucha, lots of fruits, the usual. <laughs> exactly. So, this is a Berkey filter. It has two charcoal filters inside, and right now the water is already filtered down into the lower vessel. Now, I don't drink this water, okay, you don't. but I will wash my hands with it. Okay and I'll cook with it if I'm boiling it. But these are the jugs of my actual water that I drink. Um, as you can see, some are empty. I gather the water in glass jugs by hiking into an old nature preserve where the spring is. I have the water tested at a lab and stuff like that, but I've been doing that for three years. So not having running water is like no big deal, kind of. <laughs> I forage, so I've got a lot of like dehydrated mushrooms here, Thanks, little forage yeah. things, yarrow from the garden, linden from a tree down the block, rose petals from the beaches. I do have a garden, so this is like drying some lemon balm and some more yarrow to use for tea or whatever else concoctions we come up with. But yeah, kitchen. <laughs> kitchen. It's enough. I mean, you, you yeah. have electricity. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's like what you really need, shelter and electricity. It's not super tidy right now, but... So yeah, it spreads out here because the other side of the container is Sean's, where he has his like length, and then I have the spans of the back here. Because you can see where the two containers were. Uh, yeah, this is the weld line here, and I've actually used some affixant to fill in holes. Since no one's ever lived in it before, I needed it to actually seal it up because it was in winter time, it's just 14 degrees, you know, blasts of icicle and cold coming in. 
Okay. So this is metal, and then this is wood, similar to the front. I would assume that the metal floor was original, and that when they had to cut the separation here, that they probably destroyed the center panel, and so they included the wood to like make up for that. Is there a window? Yeah. Window here, yeah. yeah. The beauty of the other side of the container. Mm. There's a lot of containers around. You can see those over there. Like, yeah, right? yeah. Those belong to the grocery store that's right outside, and okay. they use those for storage. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, outside here, it goes right out to the back of my classy backyard. Oh, and look, the three feral cats are here. There's, we actually have three kittens. So yeah. <laughs> so back here, you can kind of see that it's there. It's cantilevered out, right? Like, mm hmm. Yeah, because like they're offset on top. So the, it's kind of great that we have this awning back here because it creates a workspace, even when it's raining, to be outside. These are flower gardens. These are actually poppies and hollyhocks. Nice. And then these will be sweet peas along there. And then over here we have white lilies and gladiolas and some different varieties of milkweed. So you use animal manure for a cup? For so, my, my friend actually collects this from one of the stables nearby and they let him take however much poop he wants for fertilizer. So he uses that. So why this cantilever? You know why they just... I think it was for the aesthetic. So that that way they could have a patio on the front of the top sections. That's right. And then the people that have upstairs patios get to enjoy the luxury of having a patio at a beautiful time of year like this. It's eight containers, yeah. Like there's a plumber that occupies the entire lower one over here. And then Paul occupies the entire one up there. And then the four artists upstairs, well. Do you see this as something that can work for apartments or something? Because that's technically what this is, stacking them and. I hope that there's a way to provide a, like better living space for people that have a small income or are even living in poverty. Uh, good sunset. With an element like this, I think it's it's more affordable. I am using photography as a tool to do research projects as well. Oh, so the lab that I went to. I collected a year's worth of disposable cameras. This back here is actually my collection of disposable cameras. A few thousand are packed back in there. Random objects and stuff from the landfill actually that I've collected. I do go out there to scavenge. So these are actually objects called ladders. These are created with materials that I've collected for my entire life. All the sequins used in this one, for example, are from when I was eight years old. I took them from my home in Arkansas when I helped my mother move out of our house. So everything here is just something collected or actually given because I worked in the fashion industry. Big fashion houses sometimes will just have excess of things. And I specialize in embroidery, so anything that's left over from a collection my friends still in the birdie world will just give me the leftovers, which is so great because I've been able to repurpose them. I'm working on a shirt right now with uh, some leftover pieces from one of those fashion labels that they just gave me. So I'm just remaking something that doesn't look anything like theirs with their products. <laughs> so that's gonna be a shirt? Absolutely, okay. so this will be a shirt. And this is the back. Sort of like old Bali or something. It's all about reuse, right? The container, your work. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can pretty much figure out how to reuse anything. And there's just so much that I just, you're never going to run out of materials if you just look hard enough. <laughs> or not even that hard, actually. They're right outside your front door. It's just a matter of deciding if you want to do that or not. 